back to my channel or welcome if you are new. I know I'm looking slightly different from the thumbnail, like quite a lot different to be honest, but we've got stuff from somewhere. If you are new to my channel, hi, welcome, my name is Melissa and today's video I'm kicking off the start of a smoky eye series. I wanted to show you different ways to create a smoky eye look, mainly to help different types of people who like different styles of a smoky eye, people who might want to spend less time on their makeup than someone like myself who spends like two to three hours doing their makeup or someone who likes to wear more of a natural makeup look again as opposed to someone like myself who likes to wear a full heavy glam. I'm not too sure how many looks I'm going to be doing as a part of this series but there are so many different ways you can create a smoky eye. That is something that's really important to remember. There is not just one smoky eye suits all. It is very different and you can change it on so many different factors and create a smoky eye that is suited perfectly perfectly to you. So today's video we are starting off the first one of the series and I am going to be doing a full heavy glam smoky eye. My favourite to wear on a night out in fact so keep this video saved for when we can go out again and you can create this look yourself to get ready for a big night out. As always everything I'm using in this video is going to be linked in the description box below so be sure to check that out if you want to shop any of the products that I've used. I also have a lot of my other social channels that you can follow me on as well. Before we get started Started, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I really hope you guys enjoy this video let's go from this to something a little bit more glam okay so usually if you've watched any of my makeup videos before you'll know that I like to do my makeup in an unconventional order but today we are starting with the base makeup First. The makeup look that I have in mind, the eyes is going to be so much easier to do if I've already got my base makeup on. You'll see what I mean when we get there, but doing my base first is not something that I usually do. I haven't got anything on my skin, obviously I have cleansed and washed my face this morning when I got up and had a shower, but I haven't put any moisturiser on my skin and my skin is like crying out to me for some moisture. It's feeling so dry at the moment. It looks as if it's got somewhat of a glow, but let me tell you, it does not. It feels really, really tight. So a product that I've loved to use in the morning before putting on any moisturizer is the Milky Tonic from Pixie Beauty. This one is a miniature version. This was sent to me from Pixie in a Christmas set. And I'm really glad they did send it in those smaller versions because I got to try out this little mini one and also their retinal tonic as well so I like to use both of those but the milky one in particular before any makeup I tell you what though it just makes a huge difference to my skin and it doesn't feel tight anymore like immediately when I put this on it feels so much better I'm moving on to the Laura Mercier the perfect cream Molsky <laughs> The Perfect Cream Multitasking Moisturiser. I swear I can't read when I need to read on camera. This one is really lovely and I've also got the eye cream to match that I'm going to be putting on as well. It kind of, I don't know if I mentioned this in a video previously, but this one has kind of like a, a little bit of like a bluey, lavender, pearlescent reflect when you put it on the skin so it makes the skin look a lot brighter. As soon as you put it on, you just feel like this is luxury in a tub. It just feels so hydrating, but in a lightweight way, so it's not like a thick and heavy moisturizer to the point where you think this is not gonna sit very nice underneath my foundation. This is really, really, really nice. And the eye cream is very similar. It has that kind of brightening, pearlescent glow. Can you see how it's got that kind of brightening effect and it makes your skin look a little bit more awake. The last product that I'm gonna use on my face is the Smashbox Photo Finish Vitamin Glow Primer. I'm trying this out instead of my Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Face because I don't wanna to get too attached to one product and just use the same product over and over again. I feel like that is quite boring. And if you've got other products to use, you may as well use them and try them. I'm moving straight on to foundation now. And one of my favorites to use at the moment is the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation. A little bit dark. I mean, would it be my video if I wasn't using a foundation that was probably three or four shades too dark for my face? No. 
So a lot of the time when I am freshly fake tanned, I like to use this color on its own. But uh, my tan has faded a little bit. It's a little bit botched on my hands, so just ignore that. So I am gonna mix in a little bit of a lighter color in the Lottie London Velvet Skin Tint Foundation. And I'm using my favorite foundation brush, which is the PC25 from Peaches and Cream. I use this every single day without fail. See, that's not too bad of a match together now. All that tapping is going to annoy me. Maybe I'll put my ring on my thumb because that is going to annoy me and it's probably going to annoy you too. Oh, that's so much better. I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way concealer in three different shades three different shades. But I'm using the shade Almond to conceal, then the shade Swan to brighten up a little bit, and then the shade Warm Sand as a, it's not really like a contouring product, I'm more giving it for warmth. As I said, I'm using the shade Almond first. This I'm gonna use through the center of my face to just conceal, and then I'm gonna go on with the shade Swan to brighten up underneath the eyes. So I'm just using the mini sponge, this is from Morphe, to blend this into the foundation. And then just added a little bit of that lighter shade, Swan. The shade Warm Sand, I'm placing in this in the areas where I would bronze. Do you see it's like ever so slightly a bit dark, well it's not slightly is it? It's obviously darker than my foundation shade but it's not dark enough to be a contour colour, I don't think personally anyway, so I just use this to warm up the outside of my face, specifically like the shade for my forehead because I find if I put something too dark contour wise on my forehead, where my forehead is a, shall I say forehead one more time? <laughs> where my forehead is a lot smaller than other people's, if I put too much product there it can look very muddy and even smaller. So I try to just put a little bit of this around the outside so that then when I warm it up with bronzer later it doesn't look too dark or muddy. I found this looks the best and the most flattering for my face shape anyway. And then I also like to bring a little bit of this through my nose as a nose contour as well. And then just buff and blend that into the skin. I just like to use a smaller brush for my nose contour. Before I move on to any powder products, I am going to apply my P. Louise base on my eyes first, just to blend that all in together. I like to take my under eye powder quite high up in towards my temples, and if I was to do that now and then go on with my P. Louise base, it could go a little bit messy and separate quite a bit. What I'm going to do is carve out underneath my brows, and I like to bring the P. Louise base out towards the temples and in towards the inner part of my my nose contour as well. I'm going to apply all of that and then powder it out but I can't talk while I do it. I just like to take a Morphe blending brush, no idea what one this was because it was part of a set and it doesn't have a name to it. So just like to take a really big fluffy blending brush and kind of buff and blend that all into the skin so it's seamless. But do you see how if I had powdered, this could have easily separated the powder underneath my eyes if I had set first. I'm using the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose 
powder in the shade Cupcake to set underneath my eyes. I'm gonna press this on with the little sponge and I'm not really going to bake with this. I just want it to be set underneath my eyes so it doesn't crease. Adding a little bit of bronzer now, I'm using the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Give Me Sun with a Trigwell Cosmetics T07 brush. I really like these brushes because they're very soft and fluffy. And I just like to press the bronzer onto the skin as opposed to swirling it. And I try and keep the bronzer as close to my hairline, if not through my hairline when it comes to my forehead because, as I said earlier, I don't want it to look too small. I'm moving straight onto eyes now and I'll come back to brows and blush a bit later. Obviously, as I said, I like to do things in a little bit of an unconventional order, so. <laughs> the main palette that I'm gonna be using today is the Lorac Pro Artistry Palette. Obviously, I'm gonna be reaching for all of these kind of warm shades up here. I've used this one once or twice, but the bright colors for a bright and colorful makeup Looks. hoping that the warmer shades are gonna hold up as well I've got a couple of other palettes on standby just in case the first thing that I'm gonna do is re-blend in that P Louise base because as you probably can see it's settled into my crease quite comfortably there I'm gonna pat this back in to get rid of that crease just obviously so it blends a lot nicer the eye look that I want to create is a warm toned brown smoky eye and I want the darkest part to be along the lash line and towards the outer corner. I want it to be quite warm through the eyes and blend in more of a rounded shape. I'm going to take the shade Mango Mango. It's like a orangey kind of shade and I like these kind of shades to start off with through the beginning of my eye. I like to kind of connect together my nose contour with a shade of this colour. So it's keeping that nose contour but not looking too orange. I'm just going to start bringing that through the crease. To so the beginning of the eye I want to be quite a light brown and then we'll bring it out to be quite a dark brown towards the outer corner. And as I said, I want this to be quite rounded and also I'm gonna have a lot of drama on the lower lash line. So the shade I've just used is this one here. I'm gonna be moving on to a darker one called Cake Batter and start bringing that all the way through the crease. I'm just applying that color where I want it first and then I'll move on to blend it when I'm happy with the position of it. I've wiped off the excess on the kitchen roll that's in front of me and I'm buffing out that blend. The key to a smoky eye is to just blend, to be honest. It doesn't need to be too precise. A lot of it is very like a messy blend. So obviously, as you can see, I am bringing that right down towards the lower lash line. The darkest parts are going to be at the lash line and the lower lash line as well. I've just applied a lot of the shade Burnt to the outer corner of the other eye and I've kind of focused it in that kind of outer V. The only thing I found with this shade is that it has it's ever so slightly started to separate the tiniest bit. Really slightly patchy, but we're gonna work with it. This one also does have quite a bit of fallout, so you do have to kind of tap that off first if you don't want that to fall down onto your cheeks. I've worked this through the outer part of the crease and then I've also brought it round in like a rounded shape on the outer corner. And I'm also just swapping between the brush I used previously with the shade Cake Bake on it, just to blend it together. I'm just bringing this shade Burn a little bit more onto the actual lid to blend it in towards the inner corner. I've just done the other eye off camera just to figure out the exact kind of shape that I wanted to create on this eye to show you guys on this side. I've used the Morphe colour pencil in dark room. I'm going to go straight on and put it through the waterline as well because that made a massive difference in the makeup look having that already done. It made it look so much darker already. 
I'm only applying the eyeliner pencil halfway along the lower lash line because I will use a brush to blend it towards the inner corner. I don't want it to be too dark right towards the inner part of my eye anyway. I'm taking a detail shader brush from Zoeva. You can get these kind of style of brushes from anywhere. I'm using the black from the Morphe and Madison Beer Artistry palette. This one is so, so, so powdery, but a really good black to blend in with. I literally have this powder everywhere in front of me. It's all over my brushes. It's covered this handle, so it's all over my hand. I'm packing this straight on top of the eyeliner, using that as more of a base to help buff and blend the black. Again, same as the lower lash line. I'm not applying this too much in towards the inner corner. I found with the other side, the pressing of the black eyeshadow was a lot better than kind of blending or buffing like that because where it's ever so slightly going a bit patchy towards the outer corner anyway, I don't want to move it even more. So I'm pressing and patting the black onto the lid instead of kind of blending it away almost. And then doing the same underneath the eye just using the eyeliner pencil as a base, kind of buff along the lash line. It's gonna look messy before it looks somewhat decent. I'm going back in with the Morphe M506 brush and that shade Burnt, and I'm gonna start to try and blend those two shades together, the black and the dark brown, bringing the black slightly higher as well and blending it in towards the inner corner. Blending process at the beginning, it's very much just applying a shade, blending it, seeing how you like it and then going back in with a little bit more. Okay, so to blend out underneath the eyes, I'm gonna take a small brush and go back in with the shade Casino just to blend out that black. This is gonna come quite low as you can see on the other side. And then going in to the Morphe and Madison Beer palette, taking a kind of gold shimmer and placing that on top. And also in towards the inner corner and beginning of the lower lash line. I think I'm happy with everything that's on the eyes. I just finished off blending underneath the eye area and I also pressed in a little bit of concealer on the areas that had some fallout. I'm gonna go ahead and put on some mascara and some false lashes and then we can move on to the rest of the base makeup, brows and lips as well. What shall we do next? Shall we do brows? Let's do brows next because I feel like they're a bit, a bit sparse. To begin with, before I did any of my makeup, I already put on my 24 hour brow setter by Benefit. I love this to keep my brows in place. And then I'm gonna use my Browsings Pro Palette from Benefit as well. What I like to do is just kind of stamp that on to kind of create a structure at the base of the brow. And then through the top part of the brow, I want to use the powder instead. And I'm using the cooler brown shade. Okay, I feel like we're a little bit more put together now. <laughs> so the last things that I want to do for my base makeup are obviously a little bit of blush and maybe a little bit of highlight. I might keep it a little bit more matte, we'll see. So I'm gonna use the Pixie Beauty Honey Nectar Quad. So in the palette, I'm gonna be using this bright pink shade here, just on a fluffy brush. This is quite pigmented. I'm not gonna do it as bright as what I usually do, just because obviously I want the drama to be fully on the eye makeup. I don't want there to be too much pink going on because I think it could detract from the eyes and look like too much crazy makeup. But obviously I do want a little bit of blush to bring a bit of colour into the cheeks. And I'm also going to use a little bit of the highlighty pink shade in that palette as well just to give a little bit of glow but it's still a pinky shade so it's not going to look too crazy. The last thing that's left for the makeup is lips. I'm going to use the Lip Pencil by Bobbi Brown, this is in the shade Coco, just to line outside of my lips. I'm 
then for lipstick, I'm using the Too Faced Natural Nudes Lipstick in Sen Nudes. Alright, so that is everything finished with the makeup. I'm gonna go and do something with this hair because this ponytail is just not it. It's just not it. I'll be back. That is the makeup all complete and also the first video complete for my Smokey Eyes series. As I said in the beginning, I'm not too sure how many videos I'm going to do a part of this specific series, but there'll definitely be at least three or four different Smokey Eye looks to come. All of the products that I've used today are going to be listed in the description box below. Before you leave, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I next upload a video and to keep on track with this Smokey Eye series. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye!